Welcome everybody. My voice is toast, so bear with me. My name is Kevin Flerledge. I'm a Tableau ambassador. And I'm Lindsay Vessendahl, also a Tableau ambassador. And we're going to talk to you today about our collaboration viz, the race for survival. And we're here to talk about, answer two main questions. One, how did this collaboration even occur? And how we integrated a ton of different chart types into this viz. So let's talk about how it all began. So a while back, I saw a collaborative um, viz by Spencer uh, Baki and Chantilly Jagernoff. And I thought the idea of doing a collaboration was exceptionally interesting. I'd never really seen one before. And in this viz, you can see um, I saw their, both of their styles in here. And I was wondering, I had a lot of questions. And I did the first thing that I typically do when I reach out to someone, I reach out to Kevin and ask a bunch of questions. Hey, buddy, did you see that video from Spencer and Chantilly? Yeah, I saw it. It was amazing. How do you think they went about it? Look at the data collection. How did they work on it at the same time? How long do you think this took for them to complete? What kind of challenges do you think that they encountered? How do you think they shared the workbook? Uh, maybe you should ask them. <laughs> And uh, you want to do a collaboration? Yes. <laughs> and we should not do it on sports. How about baseball? Or an endangered species? <laughs> well, I've always loved cheetahs. Cheetahs it is. So that's literally how it went down. We came up with our topic within a couple minutes. Um, but after that, we kind of discussed what we were going to do next. And we decided we'd go our separate ways. We would you know, look for some data, research some ideas get them all back together by the end of the week or so, and ultimately take it slow. We figured this would take about a month, so you know, there was no rush. So apparently Lindsay's definition of taking it slow looks exactly like this. Not like that, <laughs> like this. And one hour later, I receive a Google Doc in my Twitter feed that looked like this. No, no less than 30 Google uh, uh, links to different data sources and information about cheetahs. And she even went as far as to create a custom color palette in Tableau. <laughs> Taking it slow, right, Lindsay? Part of the uh, talk that we had was we really wanted to uh, make it look like something out of the pages of National Geographic. We wanted it to be a poster, something that could be printed. Um, so in her Google Doc, she didn't only include 30 links, she included all kinds of <laughs> infographics as inspiration, lots of different things with animals in it, lots of cool infographics. But the one we really clung to was this uh, ivory poaching viz from Adolfo Oran. So, this viz is not only beautiful, but it has tons of different chart types, tons of different elements, but it, in my opinion, it never feels cluttered. Just a beautiful work of art. So we decided we were gonna do something very similar to that. So in our viz, we end up using about, I don't know, 15 different chart types. And the goal of this next section is we're gonna rapid fire, go through all these different chart types, tell you why we chose them, what they represent, tell you how we built them briefly, and how we think it integrated into the remaining this. So I'll pass it over to Lindsay for that. All right, so next one, how we integrated all of these. So our chart number one was our header bar, and so one of the key things we wanted to make sure we shared was the cheetah's endangered status, which happens to be vulnerable. And so this is the actual picture from the IUNC's Red List Index. And we took that, and most of our data that we actually collected, we built ourselves uh, in Tableau. A lot of the metadata was self-built. So in this, we just I took some of that text information, put it into a simple bar chart, essentially. Put a shape on top to call that out just like theirs, and there you have it. The next chart, we did some XY coordinates for an image uh, tooltip. And this is going to be really important. Uh, I don't sketch very often. There's probably a really good reason for this. Uh, this is what I sent Kevin early on. I'm I said, not... is that a seal? <laughs> We're not sure what it was. Um, but this is what I wanted it to look like. And we had come up with so much information that there just was not going to be enough room to put it all in the text. So what I wanted to do is hide some of that information about the cheetah's body and why they're so fast in the image that you could hover over their body parts and find some more information. So this is really important, guys. This is like the biggest trick of the week. So how do we do this? I found the image. 
put some graph paper up on my computer screen, and found those little coordinates and put them in my data set. So really important. Very technical. Yeah, very technical. So that's how we did that one. Um, third chart, a simple bar chart. But as many of you know, databases, bar charts are very powerful. We wanted to rank the top 10 animals. We wanted to highlight the cheetah was number one, so to show that when and if they were to plummet into extinction, we would lose the fastest land animal on Earth. All right, so next chart is what we call a plum pudding chart. This is actually named by Lindsay Betzendahl in collaboration with somebody named Kaisley Benedict. What we wanted to show is the change in cheetah population over the last century. So in 1900, there was about 100,000 cheetahs. A couple years ago, it was down to 7,000. So we could have easily used a bar chart for this, but what we wanted something that I call a visual punch to the gut, something that really catches your interest. So. I started off with this sort of randomized waffle chart. Kind of ugly, squared off, didn't really fit. So I sent it to Lindsay and she suggested something that Kaisley Benedict did uh, last year for Makeover Monday. It was sort of this rounded waffle chart. Really seemed like it would work perfectly for us. So I plugged that in with some circles and we got a Petri dish. Not really what I wanted, so we swapped out those circles for shapes uh, and used a little cheetah spot, kind of randomized. And I think you get that really impactful, uh, quick change um, from uh, a lot of cheetahs to very few. And you Next can find it on the blog. I'm sorry? And you can find it on the blog. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And she wrote a blog about it. I'm sorry. You wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, Radi Next chart was a radial progress bar. This is one I wrote about. So um, we wanted to show how few cheetahs um, grow to be adults. Um, something like 90% don't make it to adulthood. Uh, and we wanted something pack impactful. We've got lots of circular elements in the viz, so we decided to make it sort of a donut chart. A donut chart's usually two pie charts kind of stacked on top of each other. In this one, it's a pie chart in this crazy shape I created in PowerPoint. So we just layer that over the top as a dual axis. We change the color to the background, add a label, and we have a very impactful chart. We turned it red because we really wanted to pop off the stage, off the, off the page. All right, so another visual circular element we had was these layered round maps. We wanted to show the cheetah's habitat, both in the past and the present, and clearly a map was gonna do that. But I didn't want just any map. I wanted this round map with shadowing. I had been inspired by Johnny Walker's viz. He does a ton of maps. And you'll see here, it's round. It's got the shadow effect. There's some text around it. And I wanted to be able to create that. This is the final uh, element that we put into the viz. This is how we did it. So we started off with a regular old map, a satellite map, created a shape in PowerPoint square with a transparent circle, and layered that on top. And then we created another shape, uh, just a shadow, and layered that on top. And then I created the text in PowerPoint and layered that on top. I think we see where we're going here. <laughs> uh, and then the final part, because I wanted it to be interactive, was to duplicate that map. I actually made it completely transparent and laid that on top. So when you interacted with it, you still could hover over all those countries to see where the cheetah lived. Uh, in chart number seven, we did a radial icon chart. So this is, instead of providing a list of information about the contributing factors to the cheetah's decline, we wanted this still to be visually impactful. We wanted a lot of information in the tooltip, and we didn't have as much that much space. We were starting to run out at this point. Um, so we created this radio icon, basically just some path functions. Um, you can see the data right there. It's just uh, two coordinates. And we just duplicated that, did one that had the lines, one that had the icons, and ultimately ended up with this, where if you didn't look at the tooltip, you still have all these wonderful icons that show the reasons that the cheetah was declining in their population. All right, next on the list is uh, something that we wanted to show some positive things happening with cheetah populations. So everything down to this point has been negative. Everything's bad, right? So there are certain populations where through education they've been able to in increase the population of cheetahs. So uh, for example, one particular area uh, went from 1,250 cheetahs to about 2,500 cheetahs in, in a decade. So we wanted to show that. We could easily show that with just a straight line or a, um, or a slope chart. Um, but why do that when we can make a nice curvy line with a sigmoid curve? So this is just using a sigmoid curve. We kind of wrap the text around it. Um, and I'll admit, I cheated. I just plugged it into my little curvy bump chart uh, template. 1,200, 
2,500, and it gives us the curve. And at the end of the viz, we wanted a call to action. So many times, I know Lindsay's done the same thing, we add a call to action at the end of our viz using icons, uh, where you hover over the icon, it tells you how you can help. Well, that didn't seem to really fit here, so we decided to make it kind of really fit in. So we used a paw print, and much like Lindsay's very technical exp explanation of creating XY coordinates for the tooltip. We did the exact same thing. We just figured out what the XY coordinates of these little pieces of the paw print were. We overlaid it, changed the color. There was data behind that. So when we, when we integrate it all, you hover over one part of the paw print, you get uh, the information about how you can take action. Another part of the paw print is how you can stay informed. And the other part, three parts of the paw print kind of give you the same general type of inf information. And throughout the viz, we created all kinds of other chart types. We did radial bar charts. We did line charts, area charts, more bar charts, and lots of different bands. So ends up having a ton of different charts kind of all crammed in the, into the same viz. And uh, I don't think it actually ever felt cluttered. So here's our final kind of progression. Oopsies. Sorry. <laughs> our final progression. And the only thing I want to say about this is you can see some of the iterative process that we went through, moving things around, changing the colors, changing the chart types. Um, ultimately, Kevin and I went back and forth continuously over that month, arguing over images and fonts and placement. Uh, so it took a lot to get to where we are, and we're super happy with it at this point. And here's the final viz. Which you can see up in the Viz Gallery, if you haven't been up there yet, is up there. Like, it's pretty long. <laughs> there you have it. Thank you. And we were really honored um, that Tableau Public then also awarded us with the Viz of the Day shortly thereafter. And as we said, um, here we are at the Viz Gallery, up there. So that's um, really how it all came to be. It came, came together very quickly. It wasn't uh, a months and months of work. And so why would we tell you guys to collaborate? Well, first off, it's a lot of fun. But you get to combine talents. It's twice the talent, twice the creativity. Um, it was probably the most fun, one of the most fun projects I've ever worked on. And I'll say it was half the work, so even better, right? <laughs> uh, but the greatest thing is that we get to share in the, the success. So it became Viz of the Day. It's hanging in the Viz Gallery right now. So it's great to be able to share that success with, with your friend and, and, um, and partner. So anyways, we have no time left. Uh, we, this is a, a session that you can rate. So please rate us. Give us all fives, please. Um, <laughs> and this does help Tableau understand what kind of content you appreciate. Um, if anybody has questions, we will be here. Um, if you want to stick around, chat, talk collaborations, Follow talk Tableau, uh, we'll be here. So thank you guys very much.